We finally have automated animated captions in Final Cut Pro thanks to Motion VFX. This is something I know a lot of people have been waiting for and while it's not a built-in feature directly from Apple, it works incredibly well just like you'd expect Motion VFX products to. As if M captions isn't cool enough, when you pay for it you get Design Studio from Motion VFX which includes thousands of other assets but more on that in a little bit. Let me first show you how M captions works. Once M captions is installed you'll find it here under your extension and you can just open up M captions. Now what I like to do is just rearrange my windows a little bit so that I can see both of these on screen at the same time. I'll just do something like that. And now you have multiple ways to import your dialogue into M captions. You can grab your timeline and drag and drop it over here, which I think is the most efficient way to do things. Final Cut Pro will export an XML, it'll import into M captions, and you can just hit analyze audio. The other option is to drag a file from Finder in this case, I have a dialogue only version, or you can even export an audio file and drag and drop that here. Now the language is set to auto, but you can choose any one of these languages, which is pretty impressive. I'll leave it set to auto, and I'm going to first choose my template. Now there's a bunch of different basic templates. There's some cinematic templates, there's karaoke. So there's a nice variety of different types of templates you can use here. I'm going to go with the sticker template for this example, so I'll select that. And over here, I can change the resolution. So let's say I was working in a vertical timeline, I could go ahead and just change the values here and I'll get a preview of what that title will look like on a vertical timeline. But I'm going to go ahead and set it back to a 16 by nine timeline like I had it. And you can change the frame rate if you need to. And here I'm going to adjust the size. So I want my text to be a little bit smaller. You can obviously also change the font and the color and things like that. And you can adjust the position if you want to have the captions in the middle of the screen or maybe a little lower down, something like that. And the text width, which essentially determines how many words are shown on screen at the same time. Something like that looks good. You can also change it from one line to two lines, which is a nice little way to customize it. And then you have more settings where you can animate in and out, animate word by word, change things like lowercase, uppercase, all that sort of thing. So it's really nice to be able to customize it that much. Let's assume those are the settings I want for this particular video. I'll just hit analyze audio and in captions will go ahead and analyze the audio in this file. It also detects that the language is English. The file it's trying to analyze is about 10 minutes long and it took only two minutes or so to analyze this whole thing. Now that it's done, I can drag my captions from this little box over here. I can just click and drag onto my timeline and I'll sync this up to the beginning of my edit. And let's zoom in here to have a look. I'll just hit Command Control 1 to hide the browser window and the results are pretty impressive. Have a look. We're rolling over here, we're rolling over there, and we're rolling up top. Let's go. Does your head ever hurt when you're trying to figure out how to create multicam clips or why your multicam footage is not syncing or how to efficiently manage all of your clips in a multicam workflow? Or do you struggle with... Pretty impressive, right? It's important though just to run through your edit and to make sure that everything that's being said is being accurately transcribed into the captions. I personally like leaving all of the captions in this connected storyline because then they're all together. But if you think you might move things around in your edit, you can go ahead and select all of your captions and hit Option, Command and the up arrow to remove them from that secondary storyline. And then you'll notice that all of these captions are now connected to that point in the timeline. So if you decide to move this around, those captions are going to follow that clip. By the way, if you're new to the channel, my name is Brad and this channel is all about editing. So make sure you subscribe for more fun Final Cut Pro stuff. Like I said, M Captions works insanely well and I'm super excited to have the ability to easily create automated animated captions in Final Cut Pro but M Captions is only one part of Motion VFX's Design Studio. Design Studio gives you access to thousands of elements that you can drag and drop onto your timeline using M Extension. Once installed, you can find the M Extension window in, you guessed it, your extensions. And with it opened up, you can have a look at all the different elements that they have on offer. So right up top here, we have specific packs like M2 before, M Review, M Keynote, MKBHD. And these are some of the packs that you would normally buy once off. And that's great because I can hit download and download the entire M Keynote package with one click of a button. And you can also scroll down here and look at any of these other collections. Let's just for fun have a look at M Real Estate. Again, you can click download to download all of these assets. But what if you just want one specific asset? Maybe I want this typography graphic here. I can just hit download. And then I can drag and drop that onto my timeline directly from the extension. 
and I can go ahead and use the on-screen controls and customize this however I want. Now, when you're browsing through elements, you might notice this little icon, which means this title is trackable. So you can open up the tracker toolbar and track this icon to your shot. This is a static shot, so there's no point tracking anything here. But just so you know, you have the ability to track some of these titles. I could also go ahead and click on show more and I can open up more of these typography titles and I can show more yet again. And anytime there's something I want, I can just click on the download button and then drag and drop that into my project. I'll go ahead and delete those and I'll go back over here in my extension window to browse by theme. Let's say I'm looking for something cinematic. I can then also pull up something from M Drama, for example. Maybe I'm looking for overlays. I can download this and drag it on top. And just like that, I have a cool overlay effect in my edit. So that's in the M Collections view over here. I can switch this to M Elements, and now I can browse purely by elements. Add-ons, backgrounds, camera movements, effects, that sort of thing. So I can scroll down, and if I'm looking for something specific like an overlay, I can open up these overlays and have a look at all these different effects. Maybe I like that one. Again, download, drag and drop, and I have that overlay in my edit. What I love about this is I don't need to leave Final Cut Pro head over to the Motion VFX website, look for an asset that might work, buy the pack, download it, install, quit Final Cut, do all of those things. I can simply drag and drop it from the extension directly onto my timeline. Let's have a look at another example. Let's go back here and let's search for subscribe. I can now see all the different subscribe graphics and pick the one that I think is best. Let's say you have a few assets you know you're going to use quite often. You can go ahead and right click on this and add to favorites. I'll also just come back out of here and let's open up something else like M Podcast. And let's say I know I'm going to use this quite often. I'll add this to favorites by right clicking on it again. And now whenever I need to use those assets that I use all the time, I can simply click on favorites and those assets are right there. Another way to organize things is by using my library. So let's create a new collection. I'll just call this, whoops, Brad West, yeah, Brad West, hit create. And now when I go over to my collections or to my elements, I can choose things that I want to add there. Let's add this intro by adding it to a collection. I'll choose Brad West and maybe some compositing elements, maybe this cool lens flare, add to collection, Brad West. And now when I head over to my library, I have my Brad West collection here. I can also see my downloads, things that I've downloaded recently if I need to go back and grab one of those again. Now what's cool is you can right click on this collection and copy a link to this collection. So you can share that collection with another friend or colleague that has Design Studio as well. And then you can both work on the same edit. So this is really great for teams. Design Studio and M Captions are available through different tiers of subscription. Now, I know subscriptions are not everybody's favorite thing, and because of that, this might not be for you. But that's okay, you can still purchase Motion VFX plugins as standalone packs if you prefer to do that. I understand the hesitation around subscriptions, and I'm generally not a big fan of subscriptions, unless I know it's something I'm going to use often and get a lot of value out of. For example, I subscribe to use Photoshop and Lightroom, Storyblocks, Envato Elements, Artlist, and Netflix, because I use those subscriptions almost daily. So if you edit in Final Cut Pro daily, like I do, then it's hard to ignore how valuable and how useful the subscription is. And the cool thing is, you can try it for free for 14 days before you decide to subscribe or not subscribe. The subscription model allows the team to keep adding new elements to Design Studio and to provide support and updates. Let's have a look at the three plans. First up, we have Design Studio Essential, which is the more affordable package, and that gives you almost 3,000 motion design elements and access to M captions. Then the next tier is Design Studio Professional. With this one, you get even more motion design elements, you still get access to M captions, and you get collections designed with famous YouTubers like MKBHD, iJustine, YC Imaging, and Peter Lindgren. On top of that, you get over 750 trackable titles that use M-Tracker surfaces tracking, and you get access to freeze frames. The third tier is the big one, and that gives you access to everything I've just mentioned, and it gives you access to Cine Studio. And that includes things like M-Roto AI, which I'm a big fan of. It also gives you access to a whole lot of compositing elements, priority support, and personalized support. Go ahead and click on the link down below if you'd like to check out the current pricing for any one of these three subscriptions. I'm really excited about Design Studio and particularly M Captions for automated animated captions in Final Cut Pro. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts about it, especially once you've given it a try yourself. 
So do yourself a favor, try it for free for 14 days, and let me know what you think of it. I'll see you in the next video.